A question I get is how does the Snow Peak Fire Pit compare to others like it on the market? And until now, I haven't had much experience and I haven't been able to give good advice. I've gone and bought a King's Premium Folding Fire Pit so I can do a sides by side comparison and see which one I reckon could be best for you. The reason this comparison is so interesting is because of the cost difference between these two fire pits. In Australia, you get this kit here for $550 Australian, and you can get this one here on a good day for $120 Australian. That's 4.6 times the price. And on the Snow Peak, you don't get a bed or a, a a mesh or grate to put your charcoal on. If you want the Snow Peak version of that, that's an extra $90, putting the price of the Snow Peak up to the equivalent of this to 5.33 times the price. To draw a parallel with that right, that's like a stock Pajero Sport being driven out of the factory showroom compared to a decked out Mercedes G-Wagon. That's the scale of difference between the cost of this fire pit uh, as a set and this fire pit as a set. That's pretty significant. That being said, anyone that I have spoken to that owns a Snow Peak, no one says a bad word about them, apart from something which may be fairly obvious in this shot that you can see. People rave about them, people seem to get value out of them, and I'm certainly in that camp too. So I've put it through its paces especially on the channel in the last two years, and I think it's great. So let's see how this one compares to it. I hope you can see all the mosquitoes in the shot. I swear I saw one carrying a bird before. My general impressions of these fire pits themselves is that there's no discernible difference in weight or size. The Snow Peak has a rounded foot on the bottom of the stand just to fit in the slots of the base, whereas the King's one uh, has a flat bottom in order to uh, sit in the latches and be latched down. The King's one actually has more air coming into the fire pit because there's a larger gap between the hinges down the edges of the four sides. I suspect that's because they can have more lenient tolerances when they're manufacturing, whereas I think Snow Peak have done it like this because they can manufacture more confidently to a tighter tolerance. That's my theory anyway. The Snow Peak is manufactured in Japan by the original inventor or the owner of this first design. And the, this King's One is one of many brands that are contract manufactured in China. There's a big difference in the craftsmanship, the welds, uh, the, the way it's put together. I remember when I got this unboxed and the way it was wrapped, it was like a beautiful present and then you get to look at it, you get to marvel at, at how, how beautiful it is, the craftsmanship, right? Whereas with this, it's all banging around in the box, a little bit of a little bit of bubble wrap, and it's all squished together. What's this? What's this? Come on. Can you smile? Say cheese. Nothing says contract manufactured in China to an, at an aggressive price point more than big uh, serial numbers for the part numbers uh, etched into the the base and the charcoal plate. There wasn't one part of it that wasn't scuffed or damaged when I opened it. I had a look at everything. I'll put some footage up now. Um, the burrs aren't finished very well. Someone will probably cut themselves on one of the holes that has been um, punched at some point. All in all, for 120 bucks, you're getting a good deal, but craftsmanship, you really get what you pay for. The other thing you really get what you pay for is, is the stainless steel type. So this is made of 316 stainless steel, commonly referred to as true marine grade stainless steel. And this one is made of 201 stainless steel. There's a big difference there. This one should last a lifetime, if not a couple of lifetimes, even with rugged use, leaving it outside. And I've never heard of anyone with the Snow Peak rusting, whereas 201 grade stainless steel is absolutely the stainless steel you use when you made to make to a price and you wanted to say that it's stainless steel so you're basically using the cheapest possible definition to call it 
cheapest possible material you can use to call it a stainless steel. If you start Googling online rusted folding fire pits and some of the Facebook pages, you will see that people have like have got these and within 12 months they've got giant rust spots on them and they're corroding. Bear with me, I just had my first out there with Dan leech experience. Ah! This thing, the X stand, that you'll see in my videos where I prop up the Snow Peak fire pit, this is an extra from Snow Peak and not included in this kit, so I haven't used it in the comparison. The base stands are both powder coated mild steel or low carbon steel, and the Snow Peak appears to have uh, more weld material and the, the outer rim stuck on better. The, this one feels fairly cheap, although I must say, I think it's a thicker steel used here compared to the Snow Peak. It's a more glossy finish on the Kings one. This has been heavily used, so it's faded, but it was definitely not this glossy when I first got it. I wouldn't be surprised if these lasted the same amount of time, being low carbon steel, powder coated, rubbing on the ground, getting knocked around they're gonna rust eventually. They're the first thing that's gonna go, but I can't see much difference between the two in the actual bases. The stand of the Snow Peak just slots in through holes in the base, whereas the King's one, uh, the four legs are latched on using latches. I don't know why pretty much all the ones on the market apart from the Snow Peak have these latches. Seems to be a common thing. I can only think that someone thinks it's a safety feature, so, um, you know, you're not gonna knock the fire over easily and it's gonna topple. I kind of counter that thinking by saying, if someone's walking along and trips on the fire, like a, even a child, it's gonna be much easier to collapse this fire pit and roll off it than it would be if this was like that. So in that moment where someone's gonna, gonna really injure themselves, I think you can get out of the situation quicker if you don't latch on to the base. Apart from that, it makes moving it a bit easier. So we'll get into moving the fire pit later, but if it's all um, connected to the base, it just comes all together. Whereas with the snow peak, you'd have to pick up the fire pit and then pick up the base. The other gripe I've got with latches on the base is that it's just more things to break and go wrong. So I already wouldn't trust King's brand personally and for paying the price you're paying. I don't expect it to last a really long time. And to have sort of extra rivets and the, and the, the buckle mechanisms, just, I just don't think it's necessary. So it's just one more thing to go wrong. The King's kit has this. It's a, a mild steel, fairly thick uh, piece, which is powder coated. And this creates a, a, a bed to put your coals on. It's pretty good, I think it'll do the job. It'll rust out pretty quick. I can already see on the burrs that it's exposed um, as well as showing some signs of damage just from one trip coming out here today. Snow Peak have a cast iron version of that which looks similar. Uh, it looks like a more fancy design. It hopefully will last longer given it's designed to be in that heat and it's made by Snow Peak, but I'm speculating I don't have one. What I do have is this. This is a stainless steel piece of mesh uh, that I got off Drifter when I bought the fire pit and now Drifter stocked and sell just these. They're light, they're not gonna rust, they're absolutely perfect for just lifting up the better coals. So I don't think it needs to get any more complicated like than that. I recommend getting one of these for 25 bucks. The other feature that the Kings has that the Snow Peak doesn't are handles, these ones here. And like the latches on the base, it seems that most copies of the Snow Peak on the market have these handles, but the Snow Peak does not. This, I believe, is so people can move the fire around easily once it's all set up. So especially because it's latched to the base, you can pick up the entire uh, unit or collection or set and move it around. In my experience, this is a, a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. When I get to camp uh, or, or work out where the fire's gonna be, I generally plan everything from the sunset to where traffic's gonna be driving by, to where we're gonna get the best view, to where the wind's coming, and the fire usually stays put. It's the center point of camp, right? The fire is what um, is often the center of, of activities. So firstly, you're probably not gonna move it that often. 
And secondly, if you do move it, you're probably gonna need gloves anyway, because it's gonna be super hot being so close to the fire like that. So you've got your gloves, and once you've got your gloves on, you can lift the snow peak without the handles. So the handles really don't make it any more convenient if you're gonna be using gloves anyway. Yes, it's latched to the base, but that the base is usually soft enough to touch. So, so you, pick, you pick up the fire pit with the gloves, someone follows behind you with the base. It's really not that hard to move. So I just think, again, like the latches, it's more things to go wrong. I mean, there's probably a few, um, a few situations where it could be handy, right? In Australia, you're not allowed um, to, sorry, in Victoria, you're not allowed to drive on the beach, you're not allowed to be on the beach as much as, say, Western Australia. So if you're in a national park or something and the, the beach, beach is just a walk away, well, you can have your fire, cook your dinner in your campsite, and then after tea, go watch the sun go down, or when the sun goes down, take it out, you know, move it somewhere where you wouldn't be able to move it otherwise. A good example of that is Blanket Bay uh, in Victoria where we've been a couple of times um, where it would have been really cool to bring the fire down once the sun went down down to the beach and hang out there. The other one is of course is in inclement weather you know it starts pouring down and you've got an awning set up and you can move it under. So those are probably the only situations where I'd want to move the fire but I reckon I can do it with gloves on this anyway so it's a bit useless. Also it's just a bit of tube with the handle hanging in it. There's nothing fancy about it. So after you leave it, it wobbles for ages and I'm trying to watch the bush telly. I think I'll be distracted. I'd rather the simplicity of not having them. All right, moving up, let's look at the grill bridge. They're both roughly the same size. I think the King's one is a bit more square. Uh, the main difference is the hinge type. So. This is just a bit of tubing that's rotating in, in a hole, a hole in the side there. Whereas the Snow Peak one's actually got a hinge system, which brings it up like that. They're both made of the same material the fire pit's made of. So 201 stainless steel, 316 stainless steel. So this will last forever along with the fire pit. And this will last as long as this fire pit lasts too. I will say, I think the snow peak's a bit sturdier on top. See how the fire pit's moving before the grill bridge moves when I do that. Whereas with the Kings, have a look at this. So there's just a lot of slack there. And especially given you, you, you're kind of being encouraged to lift it up while, while your food's on there and while it's hot. Yeah, I think it could be a bit more sturdy. And here's the part I'm a bit embarrassed to talk about as a Snow Peak fan, the grills. When I did my Snow Peak review, the second video ever on the channel, I tried to blame the users of this grill for their grills going rusty, saying that they, weren't, they were not cleaning them too harshly and not drying them. Well, I was wrong. Mine rusted. So I left mine out in uh, undercover, but outdoors, so um, under the pergola. Uh, a couple of times for a couple of days and that was enough just to start it off and then that was enough that I didn't want to cook on it and then it just it sat around and, and now it looks like this. So it's essentially a good pot holder to put my camp oven on to stop burning the grass and and that's about it. So this is a chrome plated steel or chrome coated steel not stainless steel and that's where Snow Peak have gone so wrong. The other part that they've gone wrong on is the shape of the grooves in the, in the actual mesh of this. As soon as you get any marinade or sticky food on there, it's impossible to clean. And it's pretty hard to clean even if you've just got a chicken breast fillet with canola oil on it. You're still gonna struggle to clean it when you're done. So yeah, not using that anymore. Most of the time I use the Osbry to cook with, but I've just got this because I, I felt bad that I couldn't use it the grill bridge as intended. This is from Drifter Stockton, who, uh, so Drifter, who sold these fire pits for a long time, worked this out and now uh, sell these as standalone units to fit the grill bridge of the, the Snow Peak. So that nests in there nicely, whereas most of the others on the market won't fit inside. So this, 
This uh, just basic grill net is a thousand percent easier to clean and is going to last a thousand times longer than what Snow Peak came up with. So if you've got a Snow Peak fire pit and you haven't already, I would suggest getting a grill like that off Drifter Stockton. One of the only things that I would rate better than the Snow Peak about the King's fire pit is the grill. So this I would much rather cook on than this old rusty thing. Looking at the bags, the King's is made of nylon and the Snow Peak is made of a heavy duty canvas. They both have an open top in this uh, triangle shape with, so there's no zip and no Velcro over the whole top section, just two straps. So plastic straps on this one, metal straps on the Snow Peak. Uh, it's not waterproof, so having it in the back of the year, it's no, no good. Um, and I just much prefer it if it was sealed on top. Both got a mesh pocket on the front. The Snow Peaks is clearly a higher quality, feels really nice, whereas this is very cheap. The carry handle on the on the Kings has got a is only a carry handle for by hand, whereas this one is more a shoulder strap. Neither of them have dividers on the inside of the bag, which I think is a limitation because they just bounce around no matter how hard you can tight, tighten the straps in the car, it's still banging around a fair bit. I don't like how when you pick it up, the load shifts immediately in your hand like that. I'd much prefer to have a strap that's in the center and just have a square bag. But yeah, for 120 bucks, I think this does pretty well and I, all, all up, but I don't really like the Snow Peak bag anyway, to be honest. Good morning. It's been a while since I filmed anything in the backyard. It's, it's early. I'm doing my morning coffee on the fire. I thought I'd use the King's one and have a go at it and tell you what I think. Pulling it out of the bag this morning, I was a bit surprised it jammed up. It took me a good couple of minutes to wiggle it until it, it freed and unfolded how it was meant to. So that's no good, but just something I thought I'd mention. Basically, I can't notice the difference once you've lit a fire in this thing. They're essentially the same design and you'd have to get pretty scientific if you were trying to find a difference between the two in terms of actually having a fire. Drawing back to that narrative of the Pajero Sport versus the G-Wagon, it's kind of like having that giant cost difference, but the actual performance of the vehicles is the same, if you know what I mean. It's just one's going to last longer. This one seems to have a few more holes, larger gaps, but you're never going to notice a difference. The airflow is going to be mostly the same. They're essentially the same design. This one's copied the Snow Peak and you're not gonna notice the difference when you're sitting in front of them. You may want the Snow Peak one because of what it represents. Good times around the fire with family and friends and investing in that lifestyle you're trying to get into. But unless you want it to last a lifetime, one of these other copy fire pits will probably do. Especially if you look after it, you hose it down after each use and you pack it away dry. I think that'll make them last that much longer if you look after them. Sorry to interrupt proceedings. I've just I threw a bucket on the fire this morning and I've come back out here to, to hose it, clean it and put it away in the bag. This is the charcoal grid which had that black powder coat on it. So obviously that's not designed to stay on there. That's a sacrificial layer because after one fire I've burnt or charred most of it off and you can even see like it's starting to rust. That's like fresh iron oxide that's formed from the heat and the oxygen and the water. So yeah, that's interesting to me. So if you, it's not gonna meant to stay black anyway, clearly. One more edit, I swear. It's even melted on, so the coating has melted, dripped into the center of the fire pit and it's onto the center of the base. So then I've got this hard, dried, tar looking stuff. Not ideal, I reckon. Pretty crappy design. They're both suitable for the increasing demand from caravan parks and national parks on having a fire pit with you. And they both fold up really nice. So they're still gonna be better than, you know, half a drum cut in half or another makeshift thing you've been packing away for years. Forgot to mention the warranty. So the King's bits respectively have a 12 month 
limited warranty. And that basically saying, stuff off, we don't want to know you, especially when the instruction page is only this little bit, whereas the warranty 12 month limited it is about five times as large in writing. You know you're in for a bad time. In contrast, Snow Peaks website, I've thrown out my documentation from when I got mine. It says, uh, lifetime ownership, our promise to you as a heading. And they go on to say, basically, they'll support it till the very end. And if it's um, general wear and tear, they'll do their best to help you replace it in, rather than you needing to buy a new one. And they'll cover manufacturing defects, basically lifetime warranty, which is pretty amazing, really. I do like that the Snow Peak doesn't have the handles and the latches, less things to go wrong. And I think that's probably part of that des design philosophy of them, that they don't want them coming back, so less things to break, make it simpler. I'm confident my Snow Peak fire pit is gonna last a lifetime based on Snow Peak's promise, but this thing, I'm not so sure about. But the real question is, is that worth 5.33 times the price? And I think that depends on what you see value in spending your money on. If you like the bush telly as much as I do, consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a video coming up where I talk about what I think is the single biggest upgrade you can get for these types of fire pits. Doesn't matter whether you've got the Snow Peak one or the Kings one or the, any of the other ones on the market. So subscribe for that. Tell me in the comments, what do you think the key considerations are if you're looking at buying one of these fire pits? If you're looking for more videos on the topic, I can recommend my fire pit playlist. It's got a guide, the Snow Peak review, and my best tips, as well as uh, the gear I carry with the fire pit and how to light the fire pit, or how I like to light the fire pit. You might find that useful. Thanks very much. Subscribe. See you soon.